Hello everyone and welcome to the second season of uh, the Gurton TV. I hope you've seen all the episodes uh, from our first season and you've enjoyed our panel discussions, you enjoyed uh, workshops and presentations of our product that we've done online. There is no question that uh, all the world of ours changed dramatically over the last uh, months. Most of those changes uh, are temporary, but uh, some of them would, uh, would be here with us for a long time. And uh, here at Gurtam headquarters in Minsk, Belarus, we are also doing a lot of efforts, a lot of changes to provide a better way of communications with our partners, to keep our community informed and uh, connected. Um, still, I don't understand that uh, it's uh, you know hard to provide uh, all that uh, spirit, all that uh, communications, all that uh, connections that uh, you've had here in Minsk during our partner conferences through our online meetings, still we are doing our best to keep that uh, spirit ongoing. And uh, here at the second season of uh, our uh, online meetings, uh, we're gonna have a new format, the format that uh, I actually wanted to add personally myself. Because, uh, you know, during our conferences, during our exhibitions, uh, there were quite frequently a type of communications that I had uh, with our partners who approached me and uh, asked direct questions about uh, our product, about our pricing policy, about our market strategy, or about the level of services that uh, our team is providing to you. So, and, and now I really miss that type of communication. I miss that uh, that feedback that you provide us and uh, to have a substitute of that yeah we are starting that uh, new type of meetings where myself Alexander Kushino head of Bialon division will be joined by someone from our great team and we will answer all the questions that uh, we are getting from you through whatsapp group uh, from the forum of ours and uh, via the registration form that some of you filled in in advance. So today I'm really happy to be joined by Maria Starikova, who was appointed uh, as uh, the product manager for Vialon Hosting at the beginning of this year. Most of you know Maria as uh, the person behind our maintenance app named Fleet Run. But uh, recently uh, Tatiana Kotz, who was the head of uh, Vialon Hosting product, uh, she gave a birth to a great baby and now she's on her maternity leave. So now Maria has a chance to, to use all her knowledge, use all her energy and passion to make uh, Vialon better, yeah, to make Vialon great again. <laughs> and that's why we have Maria and myself and we will answer a lot of, really a lot of questions uh, that we received from you in advance but also you are really welcome to put on some uh, add some more fuel to the discussion uh, uh, through commenting on youtube and the comments on facebook as well will be accepted and we'll answer all those questions together so please welcome maria uh thank you sasha and it was really um inspiring introduction um there is not a lot to add, but still I want to uh, say a few words and I, I want to start with a little bit of a confession uh, that um, during this past four and a half uh, months I had a couple of s sleepless nights and actually the last night was also one of them and it's just because um, I feel a little bit of more responsibility and pressure on my shoulders at the moment uh, than ever before, as I've never led a project with um, more than 400,000 users all over the globe, uh, real people uh, that use our um, flagship product uh, on a daily basis to solve real tasks. And um, I'm, I can uh, really well remember uh, one of our first updates of VLON uh, when I joined 
just a couple of days uh, since I joined the team. And uh, it was in the evening and um, we were preparing for an update and then we learned that there is some defect in our new functionality. And uh, the thing was that uh, we, we had a choice whether to postpone this update or to make something happen. And um, that was a long evening and we knew that a lot of our users were waiting for this update. So we made all possible to, for this to happen. And since that moment, each date uh, and each day when we update VLON hosting is a remarkable day for me uh, because I know that uh, many people uh, wait for it and I cannot let them down, uh, me and my team. And uh, when Sasha asked me to uh, join him today, uh, of course, without any doubt, I said yes, uh, because uh, now when I'm uh, dedicating my effort to VLON, uh, I had really lots of questions to you to ask at Telematics here in Minsk, but um, in a little bit different surroundings and uh, situation, um, not virtually, I still have this chance and my dream came true. So, thank you. So now we're gonna <laughs> go through the questions that uh, we've got from you. We will be really open and there are some really difficult questions and some questions we, that we also feel and understand which is a problem that we must solve. So I'm gonna just uh, read them and I really thank all of you who submitted the questions. So first, and yeah, people got registered one week ago and there are questions here like, uh, there are two questions from Noel and uh, he's asking how to calibrate the fuel probe in vehicles and the uh, second question of his is pretty same about the configuration of sensors. Yeah, and also now says that he speaks French. So I'm not sure <laughs> if, you, if, if you're listening and understanding what we are saying, but uh, I believe uh, that question is better to be addressed through uh, our few webinars that are available on our YouTube channel. And uh, first for sure you should check uh, fuel probes manuals on the uh, calibration of that. If you have any issues on how to uh, set the sensor, the virtual sensor of that in VLON, for sure you can uh, just uh, write a question of yours to support at gurtam.com and our 24-7 tech support team will be pleased to answer you. And if you need some special translation in French, I do believe that uh, our BizDev team who is uh, speaking French will assist you in that for sure. So that was an easy question <laughs> in that sense. Uh, but the next question is uh, really difficult. Samir was uh, the one to submit it first, but then a lot of others, including, including uh, Mario Todd, including Chrissy, including Jared and others in different formats ask us, ask us about, uh, guess what, about different more friendly or user-friendly design and all the questions about our design. So, we're starting to go into <laughs> difficult ones. <laughs> That's true. Samir, thank you for asking the questions. Uh, yeah, thank you, Samir, and thank you, uh, thanks to ev everyone who joined Samir in this question. It's a really hot topic, and we knew that it would be raised. So uh, we've got a little bit prepared, and I'm going to show just a few slides for uh, for a start, for a nice start. Um, and the point, so. I've Sometimes I also hear that, oh, you don't do anything to your UI and it's outdated and uh, our users don't like it. And I just want to pay attention to the fact that actually uh, the thing is that we have been changing our interface um, uh, from time to time. And uh, if you look at this uh, screenshot of VLAN hosting, we see that it's from uh, 2011 and this is how our um, platform looked like eight years ago. So it's, it's, a little, it, it's a little bit different now. And um, uh, we see that uh, actually then in uh, 2000 and, uh, mm, 2015, yes, 2015, uh, it, it's also changed. Sorry, it's in, in Russian, but I guess uh, you, figure, you figure it out. It's easy. Uh, and uh, we see how uh, it, it's been changing. Uh, not the greatest changes, uh, not something extraordinary, uh, but still uh, we knowing how we, our users are get, got used to 
um, our platform and how everything is located, uh, we just made it a little bit more um, fashion, fa fancy and fashionable. Um, then it's, it's the screenshot from the last year, and you see these icons, uh, one, also one of the topics that was also hotly debated on our forum. The new ones, they're more modern ones, and they leave a little bit of space uh, for, uh, for uh, other components in the interface. So now it looks um, this way, actually. Uh, and just a little spoiler, um, not a lot, again, will be changed, but um, I believe that in a couple of months from now, uh, we will uh, also deliver a couple of changes, uh, facelift, I have to say, so changes uh, to our interface and uh, highlight some components that are more important in the interface for our users. And I hope you like these changes. So it's just to show that uh, we also hear you and um, make changes from time to time. Uh, but um, anyway, this topic is not that easy. Uh, and uh, I have even today, I guess, on a forum, uh, Hamid also asked uh, this question, whether we are going to uh, update our interface. And um, there is no um, good and clear answer to this question, unfortunately. Uh, but the thing is that uh, there are two actual directions uh, that can be developed uh, based on this question. Uh, the first one is look and feel of our platform, and the second one is uh, the location of components, the location of buttons, and the easiness of our system, and uh, how, you, how quickly uh, users can get uh, involved into it without reading a lot, lots of documentation and uh, having trainings and so on and so forth. So uh, to give you a quick answer, we are uh, in this first direction that I said, and we, are, um, we have um, an idea and a desire uh, to change our look and feel a little bit, to make it more modern, uh, to make it brighter, uh, so that uh, new customers that are coming uh, saying, oh, wow, this, this looks really nice, and they, are get, they got cooked by it. And we also want our current customers to also feel, um, feel themselves pleasant uh, when they use the system. So I think that in a couple of months from now on and uh, during this year, you will be seeing some improvements, not drastic ones, but for sure they will be there. And the second direction that is in regards to the sim uh, simplicity of the system in terms of um, finding information and using it, this is a little bit different uh, because, and a, a little bit more difficult uh, because there is a, uh, fifty percent of our partners who say that no, please don't do it because our customers uh, got used to it, and we will have we will need a lot of trainings, and a lot of new doc documents, and uh, our effort and money to devote to it, uh, just to learn the new interface. I mean, the how like how it uh, actually works, uh, and the other part of our system of our community, 50, this another 50%, they say that it should be changed because it's too difficult and uh, we spend a lot of time to learn our users to use it. So uh, an answer to this question is uh, that we also want, of course, our system to be simple and we don't want our users to dive into tones of documents to just learn where they can find this or that button. But uh, it won't be that easy. And uh, if we will do something in this regard, we will be moving step by step, um, applying uh, all of these uh, alternative steps and uh, uh, some interface changes uh, very, so to say, gently. Uh, and uh, of course, we'll need your support on this, we'll need your feedback, and uh, with hearing all of this, we'll, I think we will find an ideal and the best way. So I think that we'll also have some meetup special dedicated to this topic, uh, where we will invite partners to speak up and learn more details. Uh, but, um, but I think that generally, this is the current state of uh, things in this regard. And I hope that you will like the changes that we have planned and prepared for you. 
and okay, can, can comment we keep, on uh, them. Can we keep uh, the slides on previous here? Previous one? Yeah, the previous one. The I just wanted to add one more thing about uh, our design and uh, how this one is complicated or not complicated to the end user. And the problem that I often uh, see is that uh, in many cases, you, as our partners, you keep all that uh, default settings of yours copied to your customers' settings. So even those customers who, who cannot read Russian, yeah, you see the screenshot is, is in Russian, but uh, sometimes you just copy paste it and your customers are getting the same settings, the same buttons, even if the customer is not using driver functionality or mm -hmm. uh, whatever passengers or routes, still the customers are having all those buttons enabled. Half of those uh, vertical uh, options. Uh, icons on that monitoring panel, even if the customer is not having, as in this screenshot, you see, there, is no, there are no drivers assigned, right? Right. But still you have that column. And that's what makes uh, that interface complicated when it's not tailored to the use case of that customer. And uh, it, it's, it's also in a, in, in a serious mode depends on each partner of ours who configures Vialon in a way so that customer can benefit of it. And I believe that is uh, very important. It's a, a part of your job to configure Vialon for your customers. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> giving me a piece of <laughs> a piece of camera. Yeah. Masha, we have here another question on uh, interface about the Xavier asked it about mm -hmm. uh, the dashboards. Yeah, that uh, already present in some competitors of ours and recently with a lot of your <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, yeah, <laughs> with uh, your assistance we received a dashboard in Vialon as well. Are we going to have any progress uh, with that functionality? Yeah, thank you, Xavier, for questions on also on interface we've got from you. But what we especially would like to comment uh, is uh, the question on the dashboard. Uh, and I thank you personally for uh, giving us some feedback on how it should like look like and what uh, the widgets or information should be in the dashboard. Uh, again, to tell the truth, we are um, we also like this instrument a lot and we think this is what uh, any fleet owner will ben benefit from. Uh, but the thing is that we, since we delivered it, I guess it was in September this year, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we uh, have not received a lot of feedback on what information uh, should be placed there. That's why from the feedback that we had from some uh, analysis, from competitor analysis, we, we figured out our next steps and uh, they are in development right now. So you will see them soon, uh, I hope in a couple of months, just after the interface changes. Um, and uh, there was a question about five units, uh, I guess, uh, seeing uh, them. Um, so we will... Limitation of five limitation, units, yeah. yeah. limitation. We will uh, increase it. Uh, and uh, there will be more of vehicles that you can uh, add to your dashboard. Uh, and there will be new widgets, there will be some new information, some uh, enhancements like uh, selecting the date and period. So there will be something new uh, and uh, this I hope that this will be just a start to our development of first development of dashboard but just with your help and uh, if I say that we need your feedback then this is, this is actual true this is what our basement uh, our foundation for uh, further ideas and uh, brainstorming so please don't hesitate to tell us what you think about it you know all the um, options to do it uh, and I hope that again as I said it's easy <laughs> to <laughs> say this uh, you will like our changes okay yeah my, my Marie is right please keep uh, keep the constant contact with Maria and uh, the team of uh, business analysts that we have there and designers that we have there and we are looking for new ones who will join our hosting team to make uh, user interface better we do believe that we can improve it, but it will be done slowly, step by step, not drastic changes that would make uh, cause more problems yeah, than benefits. Still, right. we do have an interface 
that uh, more than 100,000 users use daily, right? Right. And uh, it's, it's not the case that users are not able to fulfill their tasks and Every day. do whatever mm -hmm. they need with that interface. It, it, it works fine for most of the cases, but still, I, I, I feel myself, yeah, and most of us, we are using, you know, B2C products, we are using Facebook, and probably we feel that, hey, Facebook is a bit more modern, or YouTube is a bit better, yeah, than... It's like fancy, Yeah, nice. fancier than we alone. Yeah, but you cannot track uh, vehicles, and you cannot run the reports on vehicles on YouTube, yeah, you can just see video and have comments here. Okay, so difficult questions would go to Maria and I'll have the simpler ones. Thank There's you. a question about, uh, yeah, from Timothy uh, from Secretor Africa about uh, configuration uh, of joint tech devices. Yeah, he wants to know how, how they set parameters like cable lock, cable cut, damage and cable unlock. I would say that it also a way, I mean, if you have uh, difficulties or questions how can you configure a certain type of device and somehow you've got the device probably you also have the manual on it probably in that manual you would have uh, the list of parameters yes uh, that you can have from that device normally the data would come to be alone and then based on that parameters you can configure the virtual device and virtual sensors and virtual commands and alerts based on that device. So if you, if you need uh, some special assistance on your case, please contact uh, implementation specialist, I believe it's Sergey who works mm -hmm. with African customers or contact just support at gurtam.com and for sure we are open and we do want to help you in that case. And uh, we will forward that request of yours to our support team and uh, they'll get in, in touch with you and check check what are the problems that you're facing right now. Okay, and Maria, we are having here a question from Ahmed, actually a series of questions. So the first one would be about passengers and outer unbinding time, which is not less than one hour. And the cases are when student, students or staff taking multiple vehicles and remain, remains bind to the first one for extra hour. Yeah, about the time limits that we set in software and is it uh, possible to change it? Yeah, right. Uh, that's, that's a really good question and not the difficult one. Uh, so uh, what I can say about it is that uh, there is clearly no uh, reasonable explanation of why it's one hour um, limitation. So it's actually by default it's 10 hours, uh, but you can uh, limit it to one hour. Um, and the thing is that uh, I feel that it can be changed to 20 minutes and 15 minutes. Uh, so it's not something that is uh, hard coded in, this, in the system that way that it cannot be changed. So we'll look into it a little bit more detailed uh, after our um, session uh, and see whether it's possible to do it or not. And uh, it will be our homework, just as you did your homework with asking this question. Uh, so I think um, we'll contact you and uh, say on our results uh, in regards to it. But at the moment, uh, there is no clear uh, no to it. So I think uh, something can, can be done to it. And uh, if, if you're talking about those limits, Maria, okay, can you explain? Like in dashboards, somehow we've got that limit of five vehicles. Yeah, right. here we have that limit of one hour. Where it comes from? <laughs> I from mean, somebody. You, you, are, you are an analyst, <laughs> from probably there were other analysts, but yeah, right. how uh, it works? Probably uh, about this one hour, is, it happened, I don't know, maybe five, seven years ago, and it's uh, totally difficult now to find out that person who actually... But we don't need to blame anyone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, person. I know, Just but to find, and maybe he had some idea in mind why it was one hour. We, we have not found it ourselves, so that's why I say it's possible to be changed. In regards to other limitations, uh, there are certain reasons why we limit uh, this or that to a particular number. And if we talk about dashboard, this, this was probably a wrong selection of uh, widget format. It just was not supposed to be used for more than uh, five units. That's why what, we, what our next step could be. So we, we thought, okay, we need at least 10 
units to be displayed on dashboard or more in the future. And we said that, okay, then we need to change the format of the widget. So it's not bar chart, something different, it's a line chart or whatever, but we need to give this ability. So format is okay, then we need more units and we do it. So this is what you will see soon. Another um, idea where this or source where this limitation can come from is um, basically, you know, all, all of you know that we, uh, it's again like the situation with reports that uh, when you run uh, some reports, like maybe um, a good example here will be like trips reports where a lot of data is analyzed and you need to analyze like million messengers and give some good result. So again, there, there should be limitation because otherwise, um, you will run this report forever. And uh, that's why you also need to understand that analyzing of messages takes time. That's why we also work in another direction to, uh, so to say, to translate our messages into something different that is quicker and will give us uh, an ability to analyze data that comes from um, vehicles and sensors uh, quicker and give you better results sooner than a couple of minutes, let's say. Or so more, I hope or more uh, waiting, yeah? Yeah. Waiting time. <coughs> okay, yeah, that, that, that makes it clear that those limitations are not just falling from skies. Sometimes. On us. Sometimes <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah, it okay, but it's not the case anymore. Um, let's see. Let's see, okay. Uh, we have, uh, I, I'll try to follow the questions uh, on the comments here. And, uh, so all the introductions and hellos from all the partners would not just erase it on my screen. And we have a question from Jared. Yeah, uh, who asks, is uh, there any improvements coming to the app, which I believe is mobile app? Yeah, and if so, what are they? Notifications creation, geofence by address, or similar? And we have quite a similar question from Chrissy, I believe from mm -hmm. Flitila. Yeah, and, who, uh, and, and she asks pretty same. Yeah, plans to develop mobile app focused on the consumer model and extra features like unit setup, simple reports, and all this and that. First, I want to underline that we have a special team and team of analysts as well who are working on a mobile app, which is a separate uh, direction of development. Yeah, we have a team who works on a web application, Vialon, and we have a special team who, whose daily work is devoted to creation of that mobile app of ours. Probably those of you who followed our online uh, panels and webinars and presentations noticed or seen the presentations that uh, Alexandra Deacon was doing in regards with that uh, distance tag that that mobile team released a couple of weeks back and that uh, application was addressed to, was targeting the current situation with uh, coronavirus and uh, that is what uh, that team was actually doing I mean, last uh, couple of weeks, and still we have a lot of requests from partners who are using, uh, who are starting to use uh, that applications in some projects related with uh, COVID-19. So that's what the team was busy with, but still, yes, the team is going to work on uh, the mobile app longer, and they want to improve it with some extra functionality. When it comes to the exact features, I cannot uh, list them by now, uh, right now, because still we are here. We are focused on the web app of ours. But as Marie already mentioned, please share your use cases. Please share the ideas why you really need to create what you mentioned here: create notification from a mobile app rather rather than create uh, uh, that notification through a web app. Because, uh, in, I mean, most of uh, the cases that uh, we see in our practice or how it communicated to ours, to us, is that uh, the end user is, uh, in most of the cases, the end user gets pre-configured account at VLON and most of the rights are disabled. So he already, that user gets preset notifications, preset report templates, preset everything. So the end user is not uh, going through that really difficult uh, settings, difficult uh, or highly customizable settings of all the notifications and all this and that. Probably, and I do believe that it's a job of yours to create that notification. And if you're creating that notification, 
why wouldn't you do it uh, uh, from a web app? Yeah, if you have your own uh, mm, dispatching center and you have your own uh, tech, tech support engineers who are doing that. If we are talking about the customer consumer app, yeah, what, what uh, Chris is uh, writing about, then we are talking about a separate app that probably might probably be released, but uh, currently it's uh, not in our plans for the nearest uh, couple of months at least, till, till, till I believe uh, the autumn we are not starting working on that, but uh, if that idea of uh, consumer app, mobile app, will be supported by community and for sure that's our task now to check with other partners who might be or might be not interested in having that mobile app inhabited branded inhabited probably in a not free mode but paid mode through an app store or google play then probably we'll start working on that but as for now still we are targeting uh b2c markets in most of the cases not we are targeting b2b and that means that uh, that model of uh, giving more rights to users who would do all that by themselves is not is not actually a I mean core business of ours and not the core business of most of the partners who are working with us. That was not the simplest question, but and not, you the, managed shortest, it. And not the shortest <laughs> answer. But at least that's how the situation is right now. Okay. Uh, Masha, we are going back to the question. Now we have a question from Andrew from Estreon, and the question is about the pop-up you get when you hover over something. And the information can be useful, but it ends up uh, popping up lots as you hover up and click on things, which can be quite distracting. Can you comment on that and how can you turn it off or on or manage to have it longer? <laughs> yeah, I will, sure. And uh, why I smiled is because um, there are always cases when some partner asks us about something, new functionality, or to delete something. And uh, there are always phrases like, okay, just give us the ability to, to turn it off. And this is my favorite ones, uh, one, because um, I truly believe that if we give some functionality to our partners, then this is a useful functionality. And we believe there is value in it. That's why when we deliver something, we don't want immediately to give an option to toggle something off. That's why, no, <laughs> we're not going to do it. But when it's just, it's, it's lyrics, but uh, turning back to um, tooltips, uh, I can say that uh, this is kind of a um, tech, tech, technical depth func functionality that's also known by our team and um, uh, to tell the truth, we also want to change it a little bit because we know that uh, they sometimes they appear not in uh, evident places and not in the best time when they should actually appear. Uh, so there are certain problems that we are aware of and um, uh, as it's, a, it's not new functionality, it's more like technical depth, uh, we try to insert a certain percent of new functionality, optimizations, uh, interface changes in each of our updates. And the same is true about technical depth. So I think that in some time, uh, depending on our priorities, of course, uh, because there are some se more severe uh, things, uh, surely we will also address this uh, question. And thanks for addressing it. Okay. It's on our list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, have, we have another question on UI from Fernando and who asks uh, us about if we are planning to improve the icons uh, that we have in interface and the uh, format of this, which is 32 per 32, yeah, in the new UI, which is not actually new, but improved UI of ours, constantly improved. Uh, I was not here. Yeah, thank you, Fernanda, actually, uh, for the question. And thank you, actually, for being very active uh, on forum. You're one of our top uh, posters <laughs> and uh, always, always gives, uh, give us ideas on what can be done and how to evolve our platform. I was not here in Gurtam when we changed the icons uh, the previous time. <laughs> I don't know that it was a hot topic. It was highly debated uh, on forum and not, it was not easy to, um, to say, uh, to 
Um, to give uh, some idea of why these changes to icons uh, took place and not, of our, not all of our partners understood it. Uh, but still, now everybody is used to it and uh, they're really nice. Uh, in regards to any plans on um, new icons, it's difficult to say what particular icons are meant, but surely there are a lot of icons in VLON. Uh, there are no certain plans to change anything particular. Uh, but I think that uh, if we are going to make some more fancy uh, UI um, that uh, is more from uh, 2000 and uh, more 2020, 2000, <laughs> this year, this year oh, design, this year. yeah, this year design. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll have it recorded. Yeah, and okay. when you check that video after a couple of years, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you'll remember the year yeah, sure, when, it's, sure. when it's all happening uh, and all the promises that we give now. <laughs> whether they will be fulfilled by this yeah, time. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to check it afterwards. That's why we have it recorded and actually all the <laughs> conferences of ours are recorded on YouTube as well, I believe at least, recent ones. I've been here, I've been six, six at years and more back here yeah, when we've changed that icons and when we've set all the limits. But uh, even at that time, what I can say is that uh, it's uh, in, in a rare case that the uh, idea of any change, uh, we just uh, take it out of nowhere. Yeah, in most of the cases, all the changes are generated by a request of our partners. And uh, whenever there is a request and the need of those changes, we, we, we are implementing this. We are checking, we are analyzing uh, how difficult it will be or how easy it will be to do certain improvements and then uh, those improvements are applied to our interface or applied to functionality of the product. And the product is uh, I mean, quite a big one, yeah? A lot of icons. <laughs> a, 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 a lot of icons, for sure. Okay, Maria, there's another question uh, that uh, probably we can uh, discuss. Okay, the question uh, from uh, uh, support team at uh, Kinetics and uh, there was another one of similar type how we can make Bluetooth beacons uh, uh, streamline easy to deploy and what's the recommended hardware type. Uh, when coming to this question about uh, choosing the hardware be it uh, tracking hardware any sensors or beacons we always try to keep uh, the policy of being uh, you know hardware agnostic and uh, being uh, kind of like neutral and uh, creating a software and interface and technology to be able to work with multiple providers, multiple manufacturers of those devices. So, I mean, here when we are recorded, uh, we cannot, uh, I would not recommend you certain type of types of devices, but for sure there are a number of those available on the market today. You can, uh, I mean, there are a number of links uh, that are provided at our forum, I believe, uh, in the partner community and uh, in WhatsApp group. I mean, you can also ask that questions and get, get first-hand uh, replies and first-hand experience from uh, people who are already deploying those devices and the uh, people who already have experience in using the devices. Because still, I mean, here you have that uh, nice wall, but around us uh, we are at our hardware showroom and we have a lot of pieces of hardware. And uh, frankly speaking, that's the biggest number of uh, devices uh, I've seen in my life, but all the devices I ever seen are uninstalled and they are just here and probably in a, you know, without a, in, in just a, 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 a empty, without any battery or never connected. So we, as a software developer, we do not have that enough uh, information. We do not have that enough experience with devices. We do get all that information and all that experience through you. When you connect devices, we check uh, the information which, are, we, which we are getting and our hardware team uh, collects all the feedbacks. Uh, we analyze that and uh, do our, you know, do, 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 do our, uh, I mean, complete our understandings on the devices. Yeah, but uh, still, that information comes from you. So from technological point of view, uh, there is a possibility we created, yeah, to connect Bluetooth beacons, yeah, uh, to the distance, uh, distance tag and uh, to VLON eventually. But which devices to use and which device will be available on certain market, 
which device will be registered uh, and available uh, and uh, present on the market and registered through all the authorities or all the networks that uh, it's required. It's, it's hard to say and uh, we will not, I mean, go deeper into that question. Yes, so we, 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 we pass it as of now. <laughs> okay, uh, Maria, there is a nice question about uh, from Felipe, Felipe Loredo, I believe. Uh, and the question is about uh, better maintenance model, like, and there is a link uh, to YouTube about uh, a um, nice maintenance model uh, of a competitor of ours, or I would say by a company whose business is into yes. maintenance rather. Yeah, actually, uh, thank you, Felipe, for uh, already posting this link in our forum. We have seen it, we have paid attention to it. And a simple answer uh, to whether we are going to have some the same, something same, uh, is uh, probably we um, probably no, because we have already two uh, places where you can do your maintenance tasks is in VLON and there is a special, very nice application which is Fleet Run. And this one is that we are actively developing. So uh, it's not that we are into the idea of creating something new, but what we can do is to, and we have already uh, seen it, uh, and uh, from, from the video we have of course not everything we have uh, identified not all the nice things and functionality but what we have noted uh, we will think about adding to our actively developing app fleet run and thank you again and thank you for being uh, also active there in this uh, section of our forum um, it's we appreciate all of your ideas there okay uh, here we have, uh, uh, I mean, really difficult questions, but we cannot also avoid this one. And uh, it's uh, Ruben uh, Valera uh, who asked that question, uh, what are you doing to secure the platform from DDoS attacks? And uh, that's a general question on the stability and the availability of our partner, of our platform, yeah? And uh, that question is, uh, is really important uh, for us and I do believe that it is important for all the partners who are using beyond hosting. Yeah, there are lucky or probably not that lucky ones who are using beyond local installed on their servers. But uh, as far as I know, the average uptime of uh, those uh, servers with beyond local are unfortunately much less mm -hmm. because uh, they I mean, most of VLAN locals are installed in, installed in a much worse conditions, in much worse data centers uh, than VLAN hosting. They do not uh, have that type of uh, uh, big teams who that we are having, who administer, who uh, fight back uh, those DDoS attacks and uh, have all the commitment uh, to, to have uh, VLAN hosting uptime as uh, as high as possible so what, what what i can say generally on that question is uh, that uh, we are we are we are paying a lot of attention to uh, that topic we have our uh, engineers uh, we have a special dedicated team in our minsk office headquarters we have uh, people in uh, Groningen, netherlands who are working there just uh, to make sure that who are working there also who are connected uh, and on, online with us 24-7, who make sure uh, to keep uh, our service available. And uh, personally, I'm, I'm really sorry for all the cases when uh, we alone or parts of we alone, in most of the cases, it's only parts we alone uh, that are unavailable for some of the customers or for some of the regions. What, 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 there are a number of steps that we are taking in order to keep uh, VLON as stable as possible. One of that, and it is very important step, is that uh, we have uh, split our data centers at least to three bigger parts right now. Yeah, we historically we have one huge or oh, single data center in Netherlands. It started like 15 years back. 
Uh, now we have three data centers. One of them is in Moscow, Russia, and the second one in, is in Washington, D.C., and Kroningen as well. So each of data centers uh, has their own people who are working on keeping it, it connected. We use all the available online and uh, all the available tools to make uh, to fight back all that uh, DDoS attacks and all the times of uh, when our data center might be unavailable through that activities of um, I don't know whom, but uh, for sure it's illegal activities. But unfortunately, current uh, in, in in current world, it's uh, it's really not that expensive to start that DDoS attack onto any IP address or any range of IP addresses actually, and uh, it's, it's it's really not that expensive, yeah. And uh, what we can do is just we are, I mean, we are getting more and more technically advanced to protect our partners from that cases. I, I, I also would not open all the information here yeah, in order to keep our strategy in, uh, I, our defense strategy with us, yeah, in order so, so that people who are who can have their interest in uh, having the alarm down would not get that information from us. But what I want to say you is that, uh, I mean, I, I genuinely feel sorry about each uh, minute and each, uh, uh, I don't know, tenth or whatever, every second that uh, Vialon is down. And uh, whenever, whenever anyone is joining Gurtam team, you know, we have that uh, um, onboarding meetings uh, where I introduce uh, people to the history of the company to the ways how we deal with the customers, to the ways how we communicate inside to our principles and goals. And uh, one of the key principles that I share with everyone who joins Gurtam is, uh, and I showed that picture from the little prince, and I said that uh, we are responsible for those whom we, co whom we connected. So we do feel that responsibility for every partner, for every end user who we connected yeah who's using vlon and uh, believe me that we are doing our best in order to keep the uptime of uh, the server as high as possible and we will continue doing that and uh, we, we, we are investing a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of uh, resources and money as well into that issue and uh, i mean i cannot uh, guarantee you that those attacks would ever stop yeah i mean no no not a single uh, data center can guarantee 100% uptime or protection. But every new attack that we are getting, we are able to uh, defend it, defend into, I mean, short time and uh, have VLON running again. And we are getting better and better after each of that attack. And every time they have to look for some new ways how to get us down. But still, the more we are getting down, the more we are getting up and Luckily, we alone is running again, and your customers, I believe, are happy using it. So that was about our stability and uptime. And uh, next question, Maria: How we can push a new implementation of a feature, e.g., routing, in Vialon? Asks Tony from Romania. And uh, Tony knows that forum is one of the options, but does it really work? Or other cool. <laughs> any, any other ways how we can or how Tony can? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but that's not for record. <laughs> uh, record. Actually, uh, I guess that forum is the best way, um, and um, there is also always an option to write to me personally and ask for some feature. Uh, there is my email. I can share it with everybody. My working email and. Uh, our team's uh, emails where you can write us uh, all your um, ideas and requests and we will analyze them and see whether they are available for adding to uh, VLON or not. Uh, why I personally like forum is because it's uh, not only the way for you to uh, submit your request and uh, letting us know that there is some um, idea from your side forum and it's probably even the mm, the biggest um, great uh, thing uh, about uh, it, it is that it gives ability for others mm, for others in our community to see your request 
and to vote for it and to maybe even help you with an existing solution or uh, provide uh, some, um, uh, some options in uh, um, other apps or whatever. Uh, there is also always help from community. There can be help from our side as well. Uh, and uh, the thing is that when you submit a request and uh, there are a lot of votes and other partners say that, oh, wow, this is what I really um, need and what my customers need, for us it's a signal that, okay, this is something that we should pay attention to. There is only one post and nobody um, who writes anything down about it, who comments back on it, then we think do we need to spend more time analyzing whether it's really that important or not. So uh, there's always an option to say, uh, send me an email, but uh, forum is also a good way and I uh, always uh, suggest you write in there. Uh, in regards to how to push your requests, it's also one of my favorite questions. Um, and thank you for it. Uh, thank you for uh, ad addressing this topic. Uh, so the thing is that uh, each request that we get, it's uh, and you need to understand it. It's not, uh, uh, it's not ignored. So we get a request and we start working on it. Uh, our team starts analyzing, um, and at first thing we uh, think about current functionality, uh, whether what you ask for can be solved with current functionality, and for this to help you out with this thing. We need, what to, we need to know what is the real problem that you would like to solve. Sometimes partners come to us and uh, it's totally understandable, but the requests can sound like uh, I have some client who asks for this and that. And for us, and there is also, there is already a, a solution that we are provided with. What we would like to be provided with to give you the best result it's be it current solution or be it new solution, some new functionality, is that you give us a problem and we say, okay, your problem can be solved this way, that, that way, or with some another way, and you something new. And uh, that's why always also try to put yourself um, in the shoes of your customer, of your end customer, and think what is the problem they are really uh, struggled with every day. And this helps us a lot also to base our um, development not on ready-made solutions, but on the problems that we solve. Uh, and uh, again, uh, if there is, um, there is an opportunity to solve it with current functionality, then most likely that uh, nothing new will be developed because we don't want to have two options to solve one and the same problem. So most likely it's uh, not something that we're going to add. Uh, but then there is some strategic vision on what should be done and uh, of course there is some percent of features again from forum and from personal communication with partners that we try to insert in, in each of our update. So I think that the best advice or some res uh, recipe for um, a successful request is that you give us a problem and you say why it will be, how it will be used uh, with um, your users, how they currently solve it, and, and of course uh, the most important one is support from community. If it's there, then it's um, definitely something that we should pay more attention to, although we work on each single request and I hope that you get explanations behind the rationale of our thinking, of how we think of the features that we are going to add now or in a couple of years. Uh, and this gives you a better idea of why we reject some features and why we add other features. If there are questions on this on forum, just let us let us know and ask as many as you need, and we will patiently answer them. And for sure, it's uh, good to have a nice picture on forum, like uh, Maria or yeah, Fernanda sure. Sure. has. Yeah. Me? No, Fernanda. Yes, it's <laughs> <laughs> a nice picture. Uh, me? I don't have uh, a picture. I have. I actually have Mars because my nick is Mars, so I have Mars. You, you had one before, the picture, no? Maybe. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Uh, so, yeah, we we have a question here, I believe, from uh, uh, Facebook from Mohammed, and it said that. The mileage of trip needed more relevant, yeah? 
which is not that actually clear, Mohammed. So if, if you would uh, explain it a bit more, then it will be easier to answer. But uh, for sure, mileage, mileage. Okay, uh, let's uh, let, let's go to the next question that that we had in advance. So we have the question on uh, session management, yeah. And mm -hmm. if uh, someone's PC gets locked, you need to send back into VLAN again, yeah. And it can happen several times a day, says Andrew. And uh, the question is, again, probably about limitations, yeah, or about default uh, settings that we had in VLON for some known or maybe unknown reasons. So w w w what is the way? Maria luckily, Marie? this one is a known one, <laughs> <laughs> uh, luckily for me and for us. Um, okay. So this question is actually a good one, and it also um, I provoked some thoughts uh, in my mind as well. Uh, so just uh, just a quick uh, answer uh, on um, mm, prolonging and the session, so making it a little bit longer, like, I don't know, it's like whatever, whatever number it is. So the thing about this limitation is that uh, the session uh, actually takes up uh, memory uh, on the server. And ac so it means that um, the longer the session is, the more memory uh, is taken up on the server. And actually, if let's say, I don't know, even know what is the uh, limitation, what is the session, how long session uh, runs uh, at the moment. But let's say if we decide to make it twice as big, as long as it's at the moment, it will, means, uh, will mean for us that we will need twice as uh, many servers. Uh, this what concerns um, uh, actually making them uh, a little longer. But I think that uh, this question uh, can be answered in a little bit different way. Uh, and I think that uh, what I personally understand from what Sasha just read is that um, it's just some user experience that when you work on a work with VLON and then you turn off your computer but your tab is open and then you turn it off turn it on again and you are on the login screen and okay you need to gosh you need to log in again so the problem problem uh, lies uh, with this um, scene and uh, I checked it yesterday actually also uh, if you try to log in with remember me option then um, if you close the tab and then if you open the tab and close it again and open again you will be logged in. So you won't uh, see the login screen. Uh, you will see the monitoring. Uh, but another thing, an, an interesting one, and it's another confession, is that yesterday when I was looking a little bit uh, more researching uh, into it, uh, we, uh, with my team, we found out a tiny um, defect um, on it. And um, it will be also an improvement. It's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't work properly at the moment. So I think that uh, we have already put it down and I think that fi we'll fix it. Uh, it's on our side, it's not a request. Uh, and uh, your experience with uh, sessions uh, will become better. So I guess there won't be problems. Just try to remember me <laughs> when login. They will remember you. Okay. For sure. Uh, okay, we, we, we have a quite different, but uh, in, in, in my mind, uh, in some way, similar questions. Uh, one of that is from uh, VJ about uh, video telematics. And uh, there's another question from Javier, I believe, uh, about uh, tachograph data. And, uh, you know, I mean, generally commenting on uh, those uh, questions, I would uh, rather go to the to the core idea behind uh, VLON. And VLON is uh, designed to be a kind of like multifunctional tool, which has uh, different uh, lots of lots of different uh, functionalities, but till the the certain level of uh, deepness and. Uh, if you, I mean, if you have, uh, I mean, and that, that, that policy, I mean, is with us when we are talking about uh, logistics or dispatching, uh, when we are talking about uh, 
uh, agriculture, when we are talking about video, or when we are to talking about technograph solutions. I do understand that uh, on the market you can find uh, some better applications to work with technograph data. You can find some dedicated applications that would provide you much more functionality to work uh, on uh, video telematics or just to work with a video that would come from stationary CCTV cameras. And same with agriculture, yeah, you can go to bigger companies like Trimble and have uh, perfect uh, uh, agriculture applications and devices that would uh, give you possibility to get into, into really deeper projects uh, when it comes to that niche. I mean, when we are developing uh, all our niche solutions, we are providing them, with them, we are providing you a chance to enter together with Bellon into some verticals. When the customers, and same with maintenance app, yeah, which is Fleet Run that uh, Maria was uh, the one who introduced to be, uh, in, in Bellon, let's say so. So uh, when you want to provide some uh, basic level functionality when it comes to working with video or working with uh, maintenance uh, information or working on dispatching, you can use our free applications, right? They, they, they're free for you. But uh, for sure, we are not able to create, uh, in, 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 currently, we are not able to create a dedicated uh, high standard video solution which will be able to compete, I don't know, with uh, Hikvision, let's say, uh, video um, softwares. But uh, because, I mean, also, that uh, application would probably be as difficult and as big as VLON by itself. Yeah, there are huge logistics applications uh, with much better routing, much better functionality than you have at uh, our logistics. For sure, I know that. But if we would be developing, going deeper into that applications, probably we would need another team of 50 developers to go into that applications. We would need another team of tech supporters. And you would also probably need another team who would be offering that software to different customers. And you will be charging that uh, your customers differently for that application. So in, 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 in uh, that sense, uh, as I once already mentioned at our partner conference, what we have is a type of, I don't know, Swiss knife, yeah, where you have different tools that you can use for different applications. But for sure, it will be easier to use machete when you need to cut, uh, I don't know, in jungles, uh, those uh, bushes, yeah? And it will be easier to use normal scissors when you need to cut paper. But what we have is a Swiss knife. And you can also, you know, cut some grass and uh, cut papers. But in, in some limited uh, amount, yeah. And when you need a professional tool for video telematics, what we are also doing is we are creating the possibility to integrate VLON with some third-party applications. And uh, for when talking about video telematics, there is uh, that great uh, application that was uh, created by our partners from StreamX that uh, works greatly with their devices, with VLON. And uh, same with uh, Technograph, you can uh, have integration of VLON with some third-party applications to get more functionality on that aspect. In current, currently, we do not have enough resources to go deeper into logistics, to go deeper into technograph solutions, go deeper in video telematics. Still, we would continue uh, supporting and development of all those applications by certain extent. And that extent, you should also, I mean, have in your vision. And uh, when, when, when delivering those applications or those functionalities to a customer, when a customer of yours asks more, more and more, okay, and, and we are open here, okay, please consider either providing that customer with another specialized logistic solution rather than, okay, lose that customer. And you can still use VLON for fuel management, for getting the possibility to connect uh, 
different type of GPS tracking devices, but the special needs and the special functionality that you need uh, from, let's say, logistics or routing, you'll get from uh, some third-party applications. That's, that's our policy right now. And uh, I mean, we do not plan right now to go deeply into one of those spheres that I have just mentioned. And in uh, Maria, actually in that question from Tony that mm -hmm. you've uh, just uh, replied, he was uh, particularly mentioned routing. Mm -hmm. Can we comment on routing? I mean, still, I, I, I do not actually see that, uh, that need of our routing that much since we have that uh, possibility to use Google routing in uh, all the places, I believe, uh, where you can use either Gurtam mm -hmm. routing or Google, or Google right? Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I also, you know, would rather recommend you, I mean, we can, in, in that sense, if you ask us, okay, would you do better routing because I do not want to pay, what is Google. it, 50 extra mm -hmm. cents, I believe, uh, per vehicle to have Google routing. Yeah, but just, just imagine how many developers and how many pieces of information Google has to create the routing that they have in, yeah? And how many people we should devote to make our routing in a way compatible or compatible, I mean, with uh, the one that Google is providing. So if we start that war with uh, that war on the routing, then you would never get, uh, I, mean, I mean, improved interface or <laughs> another column on the reports because all our efforts would be just dedicated to make routing, I mean, closer to the one that Google or Navtech here would provide you. But when in, and in Vialon, we give you the possibility if you need extra better routing and customers are actually using that better routing and we are really happy if your customers are not just using Vialon as, I mean, dot on the map, but using routing as well, please have that, have Google or here maps activated in the uh, Vialon and uh, you, 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 you can have uh, better routing there. And that, 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 that will stay with us, I believe that policy. So Teho and video are still on the table, but uh, not that deep as professional solutions for that market. Sorry. Okay. 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 Maria, we need to find something for you. Um, okay. Uh, are there any plan, any, any changes? I believe it's Chrissy from Flutilla. Are there any changes planned to the look of reports? If so, when can we expect those? Uh, so, yeah, thank you for the question. And um, uh, actually, I think that uh, if we are going and we are going in the direction of uh, changing the interface, um, how it uh, looks uh, and making it a little bit better, uh, if we are going this direction, when we are doing this, uh, reports will also be a part that will be enhanced uh, some way, maybe, uh, because it's, it's just like any other part of our functionality, like notifications, work list, map, and um, whatever. Uh, but the thing about reports uh, is that we think that it's more about functionality that it provides than about uh, how, it, how fancy, how nice it is. And uh, this is what we believe in, uh, that um, we can be proud of our uh, reports instrument. Uh, we think it's a very rich instrument and can be adapted to a lot of uh, different um, needs. Uh, that's why, I, although there can be changes, I still believe that functionality like reports, uh, something where you get and can, can get a lot of good analytics that can help you, um, you and your customers, uh, fleet owners, make some real decisions on their business. Um, this is about functionality and about functions and uh, um, things that can be analyzed with the help of them more than how it really looks like. Okay, probably we, we already covered or not. Uh, there's uh, another question from Chrissy uh, about uh, combining uh, a number of uh, columns uh, into one table. Uh, actually not. <laughs> or should we add more on this? Uh, just, just a little more and just not to say, like, ignore uh, this question. It's, it's a good one, uh, uh, combining 
data from different tables. It's been in our head, head for already some time. We, it's been like flying in the air. We returning to this topic um, on all of our planning, uh, planning sessions with the team. Uh, and we see that there is a need and uh, it will be a logical step uh, forward for our reports. But uh, just telling the truth that at the moment there are no specific uh, timeline, no specific plan on how and when and in what form it would be done. Uh, but certainly this is what we keep in mind. And um, thank you. We know now that you are with us and <laughs> here is your voice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Erdel, Erdel Demkvesi asks us on Facebook, uh, can you explain to me why it takes forever to log into the VLON app? Probably he has a lot of customers, I believe a lot of vehicles. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. What was the last, it, it's actually interesting that I also, when I'm asked these questions, sometimes I, I'm, I'm asked uh, the same ones, uh, I often, uh, ask another question in return, like what was the last time that it happened? And it's hard to probably answer it, but mm, maybe it's just because that a lot of data is, um, and actually long, it's, it's how, like it's one minute, it's 30 seconds. Um, longer, longer than you would expect. Expect, <laughs> uh, right. But uh, yeah, in, in uh, uh, as far as I remember those cases, yeah, there are, uh, I mean, partners uh, or mostly tech support people, uh, engineers from our partners who are, who are logging, constantly logging in into the top account and mm -hmm. top user. And then it takes some time to load the information on, I mean, hundreds or thousands of vehicles when all of them you have in your uh, monitoring panel, right? Mm -hmm. And for sure it takes time. So. First, uh, I mean, first uh, case would be why would you need to log in uh, into your main account when you have uh, login as feature? Under when which you yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. When you can, uh, I mean, wh when you as a, uh, I mean provider can log in into the account of uh, someone, someone from your customers by using your pass the password, right? And then you would, it would not take uh, that much time to get into your account. But uh, when uh, there are cases, and uh, I, I've seen those cases myself, when you have, when you do have uh, to log in into the top account and you have a lot of vehicles loading, I mean, then probably it, ta it takes <coughs> time to get all that information into the, into the panel because it goes from our server into browser. And when you have a list of vehicles, all those vehicles uh, have to be placed on the map. All the information on sensors uh, have to be placed here, mapped and Tracks, uh, reports, colors. Tracks, yeah. reports, tables, it, everything. It, 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 it just takes time and it, it, it's not something that, uh, I mean, we, we, we are especially doing it to, to, to force uh, or to make it longer. Yeah, we, we, we can check those cases. You can also send that information to our tech support and we will check, I mean, that account of yours. There can also be a case where, where there's a specific piece of information or specific uh, unit or vehicle that sends some data that can cause this. But uh, in, in, in a normal case, and we, we, we should have also um, commented on that, I believe, when we discussed the five units limit on dashboard of ours, the, I mean, as for me, one of the reasons for that is uh, that for the most of our customers, Maria would probably know the percentage better than uh, me, but most of vast majority of the customers mm -hmm. would have less than five vehicles or less than 10 vehicles, right? Actually, th that's absolutely right. We have made some statistics uh, at the end of this year and uh, let's say 45% of our fleets, like account end users uh, accounts, uh, they have less than 10 units and that's, uh, that's approved our or supported our idea of uh, saying that uh, our fleets are not that these accounts of end users are not that big and this is not 100 units in most cases so yeah it's also another uh, probably um, solution to why we have um, added only five units you see another reason <laughs> another reason <laughs> yeah uh, but 
I, I also believe that uh, I mean we, can, we we should give an option uh, for the dashboard to be used to for customers the last fifty five percent. Yes, because <laughs> it's more than uh, <laughs> ten units, or for sure more than five units also to be able to use dashboard and not just to see the top five. The rest of vehicles as well on a dashboard. Okay, Maria, are you planning to improve the support of monitoring sensor data in real time? It means uh, real time charts or similar. With the existing report feature, you need to re execute report to get new data and reload reports once again. And how can one visualize the data with current tools that we have? Uh, Asks us Peter. Yeah. Peter, thank you for the question. Peter, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually, um, it sounds like uh, some dashboard for sensors to me in some way where you, you uh, log in and see screen uh, with all of your sensors that are uh, with an within a unit or units and you see real time information. Um, there are no plans as of um, as of current moment as of VLAN hosting, but maybe there w it, it is an option, just the first one uh, that comes to my mind, but check it, please, uh, that you can use uh, our app, uh, which is actually a pretty popular one. Uh, it's Sensolator, uh, where it, sens it sensors Sensolator, and you can get a lot of, uh, you can customize widgets uh, for the sensors that are set up in a unit. And s I, I guess you will be able to see the data um, in how values are changed in real time. So maybe this will help you, like a current solution. Okay, okay, Maria, thank you. Uh, we are really pleased uh, to have uh, more questions coming here. And I would especially thank uh, Emma Finanga, who, who, who's caring about us and says that we are, we, we are not wearing masks. <laughs> But you see, we are keeping distance with Maria yes. <laughs> <laughs> as big as possible. But actually, I mean, commenting on current situation uh, in Belarus, uh, I mean, we are pr proud to be up till this weekend. We are the only uh, country in Europe where football championship uh, is still going on. Uh, during all the COVID times, uh, our football championship never stopped. And uh, as far uh, as I'm concerned, many football uh, routers from different uh, countries, they've been watching Belarus football. So not only using a great uh, Belarus product, which is VLON, but also supporting Belarus teams and betting on that and probably getting some money on that. Another question from Eldem Kvesi, who says that uh, he has problems with his uh, mobile app, which is crashing for some unknown reasons. Uh, what can possibly be the cause? There can be different causes, but uh, in uh, every case like this, we have our 24-7 I mean, tech support who are dealing with those cases. So what I would recommend you in any case when something is not working as you expect it to work, either the page is not loading or you're not getting that report when you execute it uh, through events or online or your app is uh, crashing, I mean, please inform us, and that's our that's our job to check the reason, check uh, what happened, uh, get the crash report, and uh, improve our applications. If you are not getting that feedback and you are keeping that uh, cases just for you, then we are not uh, we are not able to even know that something goes wrong. So please, please keep us informed on all the cases, all the implementations that you're having. Same with new feature requests, same with uh, bugs that, uh, or problems that you're facing when you're using our applications. Just, uh, ju ju just keep us informed and uh, that's why we have all the business development specialists, we have uh, implementation specialists, we have technical support, we have consulting team, we have business analysts. Every, every month, uh, I, be, I believe uh, currently every month we are, we are generating like I have to check, but it's uh, around one, around 10,000 emails. Mm -hmm. 10,000 emails we are sending. That includes tech support, BizDev, and all others. 10,000 emails, and if you are not in, uh, among recipients of those emails, if you're not getting them, then probably we are talking to other people. If you want us to be communicating with you, I mean, drop us a line and we will answer it. Simply and easy. 
Okay. There's another question about mobile app uh, from Chrissy. Is there any plan to include analytics, dashboards, uh, all that? Uh, Maria, dashboards would be same or different in mobile app and uh, web app. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to guess, but uh, <laughs> um, how you want it to in be? The <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a good question. Thank you for it. Um, I think that um, although it seems like we are like brothers, uh, web app and uh, mobile application or sisters, um, uh, for me um, it's also uh, it's always a question that we have a little bit different uh, use cases that we cover with web application and mobile application. That's why it's uh, it's hard to say whether they're going to be the same dashboard that we have in a uh, web application. There is a particular dashboard with uh, some current status of, of the fleet. Uh, what, what is it? It's probably what you need to know from the mobile application because it's something that you have, um, it's something that you have always close by your side and you just go and check something very quickly. Uh, just a quick report, uh, looking whether a vehicle is in some geofence or whatever. Something that is very easy. And then uh, when you see that there is a problem or a potential risk or you need more information, then you can go uh, to a web application and perform uh, analysis and see the dashboard and all these graphics and dashboards there. So probably this is, uh, this is the way that we are going, going to go um, in the next six months or so, mm -hmm. I believe. So it will be the, it will be the direction. Mm -hmm. uh. Okay, we, we, we are still getting a lot of questions here about the report, report visualization, uh, report in uh, PDF format, uh, and the uh, graphs and charts that we are having there. That's, uh, um, I mean, uh, Joshua and Fuzzy and the guys from Roadlink, uh, they're asking the same questions. Yeah, when we're talking, uh, you see, about UI, it's, it's, it's not only about uh, yeah, the main uh, user interface that we see here. It's also reports and the reports that uh, we are getting through PDF or through email. Are we, uh, do, do, do you plan to work on them as well to make them better? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, my, okay my, my, yeah, what, the what, question what, is. Uh, what, what's the difficulty the, to no. make PDF reports better? Um, Okay, I can ask uh, another question, like, what is better? Like, so, and we need to understand first what is wrong now, so to say, okay, then we have to enhance something. We have, okay, we yeah, can, yeah, yeah, we yeah, have yeah, a room yeah. for enhancement. For example, a cell in red, when the KMS is up to 300 uh, KMS or start in the morning after AM, like uh, the color coding certain cells in uh, mm -hmm. PDF reports. Uh, so technically, uh, it's it's I believe it's all possible. So it's just a matter of uh, one thousand requests that we have already noted down, and some of them are already five years old and three years old, and uh, they are waiting for their uh, suc success time <laughs> when they will be delivered. Uh, so the thing I can say that okay, we we will. Um, We'll do everything, but uh, here we will. We try always to look for some balance on, uh, um, on first of all, not damaging our current users uh, with what they are mm -hmm. got used to, uh, and use on um, every day, every day on daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second one is um, uh, actually the benefits that we make. Uh, mm -hmm. So we somehow try to understand so how much benefit this or that feature will bring to us and uh, whether it really will be beneficial not for one partner uh, who asks for some uh, reports or color coding. This is a good feature and it, it's not ignored. It will be analyzed. But if it's just one partner that asks for it, then and it will be eventually used by just this one partner whom we, of course, uh, very much appreciate, then uh, for us it's a signal to think whether we need to add these features that will exist in VLON forever. Because to delete something from VLON is almost, it's almost something, it's mission impossible. Because it's there and it's already used at least by this one partner. So when, and when putting this on, on some weight, we think um, 
we think more of how what is something that we make for m that we make good, nice, uh, more speedier, uh, fancier for more users. And uh, if it's something, if it's some uh, like reports that are popular, and we, if I'm now uh, going to check what is the statistics for how many downloads we have for PDF reports, and says that okay, it's like 70, uh, like 30 is uh, CSV or Excel 6, and 70 is PDFs, and um, I think okay, it's popular, and then we can make some changes for it to be more popular. But if it's just one of one, five, ten percent, then we need to think and prioritize. Although uh, all of all of these requests are mm, are on our list, um, but we cannot make them all all at once and immediately. So I guess let's check. Uh, we'll, we'll need to check on PDF reports and um, how they use now. But I guess uh, the idea is clear on many users that will benefit from particular functionalities that we add to VLON, yeah. Ra rather than one <laughs> or two partners. And that is uh, the constant qu question that I ask uh, to every developer teams that we are having here. Whenever we release uh, a new functionality, the new feature, okay, I want uh, the team to have certain criteria of usage, yeah, and after a certain time, I want to check the numbers and uh, there's a pity situation when we released a functionality and uh, most of the customers are not using that. And e even with dashboards, initially it happened that uh, we've got some negative feedback and uh, we had the dashboard by default as uh, switched off, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Same happens with our what's new feature, what's new functionality, yeah, the pop-up window that uh, comes uh, into interface each time we have an update. Mm -hmm. Why we want uh, all the users to see it, so the users will be using that new functionality that we've introduced to the system. But uh, unfortunately, in uh, I would say many uh, cases, uh, US uh, partners of ours switch that what's new feature off, right? Mm -hmm. It's through the possibility yeah, to do Yeah, there is a possibility and uh, some partners are using that so that the customers of theirs are not benefiting, are not aware of the new functionality that we release. And in that case, we ask ourselves, I mean, why are we, what are we doing wrong? Yeah, why we are releasing the new features and the, the customers of ours don't want the end users to start using that features right away and that I mean that's a um, kind of like unlucky situation that we want to uh, actually not to happen yeah when uh, because uh, there's also you know a problem uh, that uh, I see is uh, that uh, whenever we release something or whenever you ask us something uh, you ask us to develop something you want to use it with the new partners of yours, uh, the new customers of yours, or with someone who is just asking for that feature. All the rest, and currently we have like what, uh, like 2 million, uh, 2.4 million uh, vehicles connected to VLON. And for sure, I will be happy to release the functionality that will be used by most of them. But uh, when we release something new, it's either we, as a software itself, that would get automatically into desktop of everyone who's using VLON, or you as our partners should be investing your time into making your customers aware of that new features, or that new options, or that new possibilities to make tweaks in reports, or to make new columns, or to make that uh, new functionality. Uh, usable but uh, what I see as of now that in most of the cases unfortunately US our partners you're not devoting enough time of yours into that work with uh, your current customers who may also benefit when we release uh, that uh, fleet run application it's not a niche application like Hectera or like uh, logistics mm -hmm. fleet run mm -hmm. is something that from my point of view, can be used by 
at least you know 50 but in fact up to 70 percent of all the users of vialon but uh, up till now it's still you know really tiny percentage of uh, customers who are using that fleet run option fleet run application and same situation happens with many of the features that we are releasing so generally that uh, you know that struggle or that uh, i don't know run for new features is uh, is not actually giving benefit to most of the customers and uh, still it's uh, it's 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 you know a great uh, effort a great job a great obligation of all of us you and us is to keep our customer our current customers uh, happy and keep our current customers using Vialon as much as possible and that would help uh, that would keep us from cases when the end users comes to you and says hey you know i have the same tracking software which costs two times ch cheaper than uh, the one that you're offering yeah in in majority of the cases that would be cheap or free chinese software that someone would be trying to replace Vialon with and if your customer is really using majority of the functionality that we have there in Vialon in that case not much chances that he would switch from Vialon to another software but if your customer is not using anything just uh, some basic uh, functionality in that case there's a chance that you would lose that customer and you know I remember on one of the conferences, uh, I've said that, uh, I mean, we have uh, 130 something countries where we alone is uh, present with more than hundreds of vehicles. And uh, I've said that uh, no matter if something happens in one of the country, still we have our, the rest of the world working well with us. But the current uh, COVID situation affected all the, all the globe, right? and every country is experiencing problems right now so the april the previous month was was the first month ever in good of history where we when we had negative growth in the number of units connected negative growth yeah like two two months back i believe it was two months when we celebrated 2.4 million vehicles connected to vialon yeah, and we send that award to a partner. Then we reached uh, something like 2.2 2, uh, 2, million 450 thousand vehicles connected. But during April, we've lost in total, I believe, I mean, during normal months before COVID, we had growth of about 40 thousand vehicles per month. But April this year was the first month where we had minus 11 thousand. That's, that's a negative growth that includes those vehicles that were disabled or frozen using our uh, seasonal units feature. We intentionally provided that feature to you so you would have a possibility to freeze and uh, not pay us for the vehicles that are not used during that crisis time. But still you would keep the history and uh, those units there in your database so wherever uh, those fleets would go back to the roads you'll just reactivate them and you'll be able to use them so that feature was used by hundreds of our partners and uh, currently just within april we had more than 40 thousand frozen vehicles 40 thousand frozen vehicles and just 11,000 negative growth on VLON. That means that even now, even during that COVID times, there are partners who has connected a lot of vehicles to make negative growth, not 40,000, but 11,000. At least 30,000, but in fact more vehicles were connected during April over the globe. So if you feel that uh, I mean, everything is uh, going down. It's not going down. There are still possibilities for the growth of your business. There are still projects that are running. And uh, I mean, I believe the station is getting better right now. Uh, 
here at our, in the next room to ours, we have that screen. You probably you've seen that uh, who've been uh, into our office. And we have the screen with the number of vehicles connected to our platform. And uh, during this week, finally, we had uh, the positive trend started again and uh, the curve switched to, to a positive growth. So thanks to all those efforts uh, of those partners who are connecting units and who are able to do installations, who are able to do sales, who are able to do marketing, even in that difficult times. So getting back to questions of yours, sorry for the long uh, answer to uh, difficult questions. Uh, Maria, can we have uh, a feature in the future to filter what parameters go through the retranslator? Ask. I mean, there are lots of questions, John Grigosevich, mm. that you've asked us. We'll go through most of them. So first will be I mean, easy one about the filters in the retranslator. Easy? <laughs> easy one. I mean, technical, I am not uh, sure about technical, but it's, it's kind of obvious. Yeah? You have messages coming to be alone. You want to filter some parameters. I mean, why not? OK. Then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, it's true. Uh, it's uh, when, when I hear that we need to sort something or filter something, then I say, OK, we need to do it because it's something basic, uh, be it interface or reports, uh, what, whatever kind of information it is. Um, in regards to this question, and I guess there are some other questions uh, on specific features that um, John asked about. Uh, I, can, I will not promise anything because <laughs> uh, we are not promising or saying uh, when it will be done. What we, what we will do in our return is to, this, to see what these four or five feature requests that are there and address them and uh, see uh, whether they, they can be implemented uh, and how. So um, cannot, cannot give any cannot give any yes or no <laughs> or, or when, uh, but definitely we will uh, come back to them. Okay, and uh, what about the idea of uh, binding unions together? Asks John as well, yeah? And to show the bound union group in Vialon. Uh, uh. Actually, actually, it's uh, it's uh, not the question that I probably truly understood 100%. Uh, and that's why I said that uh, mm. it's probably better to talk to John uh, than uh, again on mm -hmm. this question and uh, to find out all the details. Mm -hmm. But, but, uh, just but it seems that, I mean, we have that uh, that's trailer feature, right? Yes, yes. And you can have a vehicle and you have a trailer with uh, some beacon, call. right? Yes. But uh, if, uh, in, in that case, with John, I believe he wants to have two units. Bind to one... Uh, Combined, in a way. So he wants mm -hmm. to have a tracking device in a vehicle mm -hmm. and a tracking device in a, a trailer. Mm -hmm. And pay twice. Instead of <laughs> paying once, <laughs> but that's okay for us. <laughs> And uh, combining then the, mm -hmm. the, the two units in a way, so probably all the analytics goes together. I see. I see what's uh, mm -hmm. what's probably meant here. Um, so again, uh, we'll see uh, and uh, check on the cases. So uh, it's probably when we get this request, uh, the first thing that we do is okay check uh, because. In most cases, there is already the request that the same one. So we'll check and see and mm -hmm. uh, come back to John. Mm -hmm. No no comments here, I guess. But we're happy to have uh, sure. I mean, lots of questions from John, let lots of questions from other partners. Uh, probably it would be great if uh, you would uh, post some of them uh, to our forum so that you will be able to discuss that not only just with us, but still the community as well. As Maria mentioned, we want to, I mean, get some more uh, discussions on the forum to see that the features will be used by the community and not just on a single case, which is even not clear right now for, for Maria, for me as well. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, there's uh, the question about uh, space, space, pro space project from you, John, and uh, probably that question. Uh, uh, we had that uh, space uh, idea of space, yeah, uh, the kind of like better ecosystem for apps that will be developed by us and by some third party developers and that will be kind of like seamlessly connected to Vialon 
and uh, easier distributed throughout the community. We had that idea. We had a great presentation by Zahar, uh, like two years Excuse back. Me? Yeah, two years back. Uh, and uh, we had a team who dedicated uh, a lot of the efforts into developing of uh, this functionality. The team was actually the team uh, was. Uh, uh, I mean, we had the team based in our R and D department, which is a separate uh, group in uh, Vialon in in, in Gurtam which is uh, not exactly into that uh, Vialon team uh, that I manage. And uh, that team uh, uh, was, uh, I mean, that was a really great idea of ours. Uh, and um, I really hope that we will be able uh, to offer that sooner than later. But in fact, uh, after a lot of efforts in development, we came to a conclusion that uh, the task is uh, much uh, more difficult than we expected uh, initially. And uh, then uh, there was a decision uh, to devote the team to another project uh, which we had at Gurta par portfolio, not within Vialon portfolio. And if you would uh, go to, I believe, a gurtam.space website right now, let me see it, dot uh, space. Yeah, you will uh, you, you, you will uh, see information about uh, the new project, uh, which is uh, Ruhavik, which is, uh, I mean, uh, again, a sister project of our GPS trace. So currently, that space idea is, uh, is on hold. I still want that uh, ecosystem to be created. We will use different approach into creation of that. Uh, probably we'll start uh, some development on that uh, direction inside the uh, Vialon division right now, but uh, I cannot promise any exact uh, time frames when we will be able to provide you some, some tools on that. That's kind of like unfortunate situation, but uh, right now that space initiative is on hold and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually sure when and how we will uh, recontinue the development. Okay, Maria, it's your turn to answer the question from John. Mm -hmm. uh, in the custom sensors, can we have the capability to have if then else, if then and else based updating so that we have a greater flexibility on how we, the custom sensors functionality works? If that is clear. Uh, that is clear. Uh, the request itself is clear. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, again, as with the, the two of the requests that we just discussed uh, before this answer, um, again, uh, when it's not that easy, it's not an easy task to say yes, we will do something mm -hmm. or will not. It's uh, a lot of work that is done behind this decision. Uh, so my answer stays the same and I believe that uh, we'll just uh, collect this. So I guess there are a couple of four, maybe four or five requests uh, from John uh, and uh, see uh, in, in more details whether uh, it's, uh, whether it will be beneficial uh, for the platform for VLON and uh, whether it's something that um, should be added and uh, more users uh, more and more users will um, use it and benefit from its existence. So we'll promise to come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> we will have to come back actually because uh, one of the questions that uh, John mentioned here mm -hmm. is, uh, is it possible to have regular monthly meetup so that partners can understand what is happening with the product development and they can give the input? <sighs> difficult. <laughs> very difficult. It's, it's, it's very easy to turn on the camera and uh, have that meetings. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it also takes a lot of, uh, you know, preparation from our marketing team, uh, which is here. And I am really thankful to our marketing team who arranged all that uh, studio and who helps with uh, the, our online stream. And uh, I'm thankful to all the customers who, who asked a lot of questions here. And we still have a couple more to come, even even it's almost uh, two hours since uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we, are, we are streaming here. So, okay, one of the questions uh, we still need to go 
uh, again is uh, okay. Are you are you planning to sunset the service intervals feature in Beyond Hosting and force migration to Fleet Run? If so, if so, what is uh, the timeline mm -hmm. for that? That's one of the questions from Chrissy. Um, actually, I mean, you 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 you, you asked that question and. Uh, the partners who are, I mean, involved in uh, communication with us, they know that we did had that idea of uh, uh, removing that functionality from Beyond Hosting and uh, forcing, as you call it, forcing immigration to Fleet Run. But, uh, I mean, we've checked uh, all the use cases of uh, service intervals on Beyond Hosting. We've checked how customers are using Fleet Run We've noticed that there are some big differences, or oh, there are some differences in uh, the use cases. Uh, there are some differences in the functionality that we have in uh, Fleet Run compared to what we have in hosting. And uh, yeah, we, we, we are not planning to uh, delete or sunset that uh, feature from beyond hosting. Though, I mean, we are, I, I'm not saying that we aren't deleting anything from there because still the idea of uh, erasing some functionality from hosting comes from the, I mean, good, good, good initiative, good initiative of ours. We wanted, as well as you do, we wanted to have VLON as uh, cleaner and as intuitive as uh, understandable as possible and at uh, some moment we thought that it will be easier for partners uh, to use service intervals or use all the maintenance functionality in fleet run as a dedicated app but okay the decision uh, we've, we've cancelled and we've decided okay still partners can use both cases yeah but what, what what we are constantly doing what marie and her team is constantly doing they're analyzing the way how customers are using or customers are not using certain checkboxes, certain functionalities, certain columns, certain uh, tables. And whenever we come across, and they do constant analysis on that, and whenever they come across uh, some something that is probably there for, I don't know, Eight. five, seven, ten years, mm -hmm. and uh, no one uh, has a clue why something is there in VLON, probably yes, we're gonna erase something that is not used or not used by the majority. Right. Right. But if, if, if we see that still customers are asking for it, and for sure before, before removing something from VLON, we will make sure that that's really something that, uh, I mean, makes user experience worse and uh, is not helping anyone or we have a replacement for that okay uh, what, what what are the changes uh, that will be made in future to allow localization e.g mm -hmm. driver work time settings as some of the settings in VLON do not suit our markets um, it's a good question and uh, can I have a look at yeah, it yeah. Uh, That's a question about the uh, kind uh, of yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's a good question, and we have come across it uh, a couple of months ago on our forum. Uh, so, uh, and it's like I can uh, divide it in two parts: this localization and this specific uh, uh, request on uh, rules for uh, driving hours that are specific for each region and only partially uh, it's supported in VLON in the form of something some rules that are. Uh, good for Europe and Russian Federation, but uh, are not suitable for other regions. Uh, and uh, in this regard, I can say that uh, this um, uh, this functionality, we, we also analyzed it, uh, this request and um, we have been thinking about it. Uh, so for us, uh, locali uh, local localizing this um, uh, driving hours uh, rules uh, sounds a bit uh, a bit it's a, okay it's not a bit it's a huge task because uh, we need to think of all the regions and all possible rules and how uh, they, they work and how they will work in VLON when we add it uh, and uh, what uh, 
what it's, it's the same situation as it's, it's closely connected to actual Tahoe uh, functionality. That's why it probably cannot go uh, like we will develop this one and will not pay attention to Tahoe. Most likely it will be uh, done uh, connected. Uh, somehow it will go hand in hand. Um, and uh, it's, it's a huge task and it's a difficult task uh, in regards to driving hours. Um, a better idea, an ideal one for me, will be to, to just give some interface for users where they will uh, simply customize whatever rules uh, they want, whatever rules they have, and we will not have to support some uh, rules ourselves and hard code them. Uh, it's some nice and uh, customizable interface, but um, again, it's a lot of work and it's probably, uh, this topic is not, uh, um, it's not that popular. Uh, I mean, it's not something that is, okay, 100% would be loved to be used by our partners. That's why currently it's not something that we want to devote our time to. Uh, but again, it's not ignored, it's now mind, and uh, maybe sometime in the future we will be addressing it as well. In regards to localization, um, generally, in, in general, um, idea of this word, uh, we, mm, we understand that this is um, an this is something that is necessary to add to VLON. And we try to localize and add some maps that uh, on the specific for particular, re uh, for particular regions, countries, uh, even countries, but give the fullest possible information. We do this, we get requests from partners, and when there is no uh, constraint uh, from the technical point of view, and we have an API case, so it's, it's easy, it's one, two, three. Uh, the same is in regards to languages. Uh, if it's something that does not cost uh, uh, five or six months of development and then maintenance work of our team, then why not? But uh, again, again, a red line here should be that uh, we would love it's, we are on our way to do this, but we would love to focus on most custom, most cases that we cover, most use cases that we cover, than in covering one, one use case. Although we try to keep balance, and, and it's a hard task. Um, so I guess that's... Okay, yeah, yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, and uh, there is another question of uh, John, uh, who, says, uh, who asks if uh, all the applications can have the same look and feel as uh, the add-on applications look uh, and operate differently from the core VLON product. Plus, we need to have the full APIs for the, for the apps, probably. And uh, if I may... Just a week ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if I may comment on that, uh, the difference in uh, look of uh, a feel of the applications comes from the current structure that we have in, uh, in, uh, in our teams where the applications are developed, uh, I mean, uh, logistics, uh, uh, Hectera and uh, Fleetrun and Nimbus. And Nimbus. All, all, all those apps are created uh, by uh, a different team comparing to the core VLAN product, as you call it. That's, a, that's the nation behind it. Still, uh, and uh, why we find that station uh, Mm, acceptable because uh, we see that uh, for some specific uh, uh, some specific uh, needs or some specific uh, cases when co companies are using that app they can be using it uh, uh, separately from VLON app and they have some um, uh, that apps of ours, uh, they have uh, some uh, functionalities that uh, is not that easy to put into the main VLON app. That's why they look differently. Still, I, I mean, we are right now rethinking that strategy and uh, trying to find the way how we can make uh, all the products of VLON family look, uh, as you call it, uh, more similar or have uh, uh, better connected to, uh, I mean, scena user scenarios uh, and, uh, yeah, feelings, probably have the same feelings. Mm -hmm. that, that's our task for this year and uh, probably there'll be some improvements in that direction. Yeah, so the, 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 that we have uh, on, on our table and we'll be working on that. And uh, the question uh, number seven from John is, uh, 
in the future, can we have an updated VL on front end that allows uh, for mini dashboards to be shown in the mouse overs rather than just parameters? Uh, it's a good question, uh, and I like the one with this one. There is a very similar uh, question also from John on uh, uh, customizable widgets in dashboard um, and um, selecting from these two ones, uh, which which is like from my mind uh, and from the moment that I was able to uh, think about it. Uh, we, as we have already mentioned uh, previously, and as we have been talking in the dashboard, um, so we would like to uh, later develop it and uh, include more information there and make it really useful for the end uh, fleet owners. Uh, most likely, then we will go in the way to uh, customize the widgets that we have in the dashboard so that if you have some uh, system that you also use besides VLON and there is information that you want in the form of a widget include in, the, in our dashboard, then most likely in some iframe or uh, uh, using some technology, we will be able to get this data from your system and uh, include it into VLON, so like enter it uh, into VLON um, just for you. Uh, so it's, it's more, it's custom. It's not something that only VLON suggests. Uh, in regards to this particular question, uh, again, uh, no plans at the moment, but it's just a, go it's a good idea that you have offered. Uh, and We'll think about it. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll think about it, and uh, we have a lot to think after this meeting. I Truly. believe we've, uh, <laughs> I believe we've answered most of the questions uh, that were uh, that were placed here by the partners of ours. Uh, there's one more coming here um, from uh, Fernando, who asks: uh, Is there a plan uh, to create a mobile app for drivers? So the driver will be able to bind to units to know its own performance, uh, like eco driving. And I mean, that uh, idea is quite clear for me. So the driver would have a kind of a buzzer probably to know his driver score and all that information that uh, we have on VLON to be, oh, some information that we have on VLON to be placed in uh, mobile. Yeah, in the mobile app of a driver. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. I mean, among other good ideas that we've heard today. Uh, the question is whether drivers will like to have this application and actually whether they will need to have, whether they will use it and will be interested in the information and check the application to check their scores or they're just okay with whatever it is. So that's probably... Uh, yeah, yeah. The question is uh, if uh, US our partners will be, you know, implementing will be offering, will be enforcing the usage of that application into the fleets that you are serving. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, one of the, one of the, I mean, key ideas and the uh, key outputs uh, of that uh, meeting of ours, I believe. For sure, we would need uh, to do a lot of, I mean, we've got a lot of questions and Valid has just probably came to us, Valid Hai, and they, okay, Valid asked about, uh, I, I would just uh, starting to finish uh, the meeting and uh, more questions are coming. Valid asks if it's uh, possible to have uh, a logo in the c CMS. Yeah, like kind of like white labeling, I believe. For the CMS manager. Uh, I would say so. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I would say yes, but uh, it's it's not 100% mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to you, Valit. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll have all the ideas and uh, all the questions uh, that uh, you ask us here in comments in Google, in Facebook. Um, we'll have all that recorded uh, that would uh, also go to all the... Uh, all the our documents and the, all the homework that our analysts will need to do based on the ideas that you've shared with us and we, we, we are really thankful we are really happy to have that uh, active community i mean it was the first meeting of that type that we've organized 
at some point uh, we were not sure if uh, the community would be interested to talk directly but uh, I mean now I can say that uh, it's been it's been really interesting uh, discussion thank you for all the participants uh, from Africa from Europe from from Asia Pacific I believe it's quite late there where I mean where, <laughs> where you are John right now but uh, you are still with us and it's early morning in Americas and we have uh, a lot of questions coming from uh, uh, Americas as well so I would like to thank all the participants for their inputs uh, we will check uh, how we can uh, work better from our side when we are prioritizing uh, put the priorities on the features. topics uh, on the features that we are uh, starting to develop to develop I do believe uh, we will keep you more informed we will keep you updated on our ideas uh, we will share the uh, features that uh, we start developing and uh, we will communicate with you on all the ideas that you've shared with us and please keep us informed on the new projects on your ideas or everything all that ideas are really available for us because especially at that uh, COVID times we do not have that uh, opportunity to go to different countries to visit trade fairs to have conferences in different uh, continents as we had before so our only hope our only eyes uh, are our partners and uh, please uh, please keep us informed about the progress that you're doing there and uh, i'm really thankful uh, to all the partners who's been uh, with us for that uh, last two hours uh, we, we, we had a lot of uh, interesting inputs lots of interesting information and uh, we will keep doing our job to keep improving and providing with, providing you with uh, I do believe it's the best fleet management software that is available on the market and uh, I mean that uh, 2 million uh, connected units probably proves that and the partner communities that we have I do believe it's a greatest partner community and it's the greatest uh, service providers integrators the greatest companies that are existing on the market today that's you our partners so thank you very much thank you Maria uh, to, thank jo you, to join that meeting and uh, Please uh, keep uh, commenting, keep sending us information and we'll be here for you and we'll continue our weekly meetings, uh, weekly online discussions, weekly panels uh, on different topics uh, with different uh, people from Gurtam team and we'll keep you updated on that. Keep uh, uh, checking uh, our YouTube channel, keep checking uh, the online meetups page on our gurtam.com website and you'll see the schedule and keep connected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye.